welcome to the Novelist Conversations webinar, Promote Your Collection to Increase Circulation and Engage Readers. I want to extend a warm welcome to our libraries in Canada and across the U.S., and a special good day to our libraries in Australia and New Zealand. I'm Kathy Lucier, and I'm part of the Novelist team working with our Library Aware customers. So I bet we have quite a few of you on right now. So hello to everyone. Before coming to Novelist, I headed up marketing and community relations for the Jacksonville Public Library System in Northeast Florida. So I know from my own experience and from talking with libraries every day that most of our time is spent promoting programs and events. You know, it seems that we spend much less time promoting all those books, databases, and other resources that make up our collections. Well, today we will share some ideas from libraries in the U.S. and Canada that came up with creative and effective ways to promote their collections, both in print and online. And they go beyond just letting people know what items they have. They're helping people find solutions to real problems and engaging people in reading and learning through what their library offers. We think, and I know, that you are going to get really inspired by these creative approaches. And stay online after the webinar, if you can, for just 15 minutes after it the main presentation ends. And I'm going to show you how to use some templates that we created inspired by some of the ideas you'll see today. Throughout the webinar, as I said earlier, you can send in your questions using the chat feature, and we'll go through them at the end of the presentations. So let's start with PJ Bentley. PJ is the digital engagement librarian for Washington County Cooperative Library Services. WCCLS, as it's known, supports 16 public libraries in 13 communities in Washington County, Oregon. PJ is part of the Collections and Adult Services team, which manages and promotes digital collections for WCCLS and facilitates cooperative work for adult services staff at libraries. PJ? Hi, thanks, Kathy. Yeah, I wanted to um, talk today about um, how we do um, summer reading for adults here at WCCLS. And let me get to our first slide. So um, yeah, I'm the digital engagement librarian for WCCLS. Um, what that means is a big part of my job is doing um, email marketing and, and um, managing our social media. Um, but also a big component is coordinating our summer reading program. Um, Washington County is made up of, um, like Kathy said, 16 member libraries. Some are city libraries, some are nonprofit libraries. Um, but each member library has its own budget and collection and programs. But we do some countywide um, pro countywide programs like um, adult summer reading. We also have you know, a shared catalog and shared digital resources, a shared ebook catalog um, that we uh, all share together as a cooperative. So I'm kind of working in a centralized role um, to help uh, coordinate summer reading. And what that means is um, for summer reading, what we call it is WCCLS Reads. Um, and we are kind of a complement to the local programs that member libraries are offering. And what I'm going to do with these slides is so that you can kind of refer back to them. I've built some notes into them, but I know folks kind of want to also see um, what the newsletters look like. So while I'm talking, I'll switch to um, a preview so you can look at those while I kind of go over um, talking about what um, WCCLS Reads is and how we build it around an email newsletter. Um, so the countywide program, WCCLS Reads, we offer um, a place for folks to register online um, and um, kind of like a branding that's countywide, some swag that libraries can use to give away and give away as prizes. Um, but our emphasis with the countywide program is um, we really try to put the emphasis on books and reading. Um, we don't auto offer a lot of incentives and prizes, um, but a lot of our member libraries are doing that locally. So that's kind of how we fit into supporting their programs and complementing their programs. So when folks register for WCCLS Reads, what's happening is they're basically opting in to get a 
a weekly um, uh, email newsletter that we're going to send out. And um, that email newsletter has evolved over the years, um, but its real focus is to kind of promote the collection and really engage people with the collection and engage people as summer reading participants in uh, their reading lives. So um, why do we do just email for our countywide component? It's um, a little weird. We have some you know, social media promotions we do. It's on our website. And like I said, there's the local programs. But email is um, a really great way to kind of fit summer reading into adults' lives. Um, it kind of takes the pressure off of them um, because it's reliable. They know it's going to show up every Thursday morning in their inbox. It's going to offer them a way to participate and engage and get good reading recommendations. Um, and if they want to participate, they can. But if they also just want to get some, some reading recommendations, they, they can. And it's, a, it's something for them to look forward to. And that's kind of how it, it, it uh, complements the local programs that might have um, higher, um, uh, kind of more structured ways to participate, like book reviews and reading logs and that sort of thing. Um, and also, it's a really great way to kind of connect people directly with our, our collections. Um, one of the big reasons that I, I particularly like using um, email is uh, email engagement metrics are really straightforward. Um, so it's very clear the kind of engagement you're getting. Um, and it's a great way for um, people to even directly respond to us. Um, and so we can tell when we're doing um, email for summer reading, how engaging it actually is. And it's pretty engaging. So book lists themselves are already uh, get higher levels of engagement than typical email newsletters. So like a typical email newsletter, depending on the industry, might hover around like 25%, 30%. A book list, at least our book lists here at WCCLS, average close to 37%. And then our summer reading emails um, have open rates of almost 48%. Um, and then the click rates are also really high. So we're getting lots of engagement in the emails themselves. Um, and if what we're presenting is mostly reading-related and book-related related content, and we're getting high engagement, that means we're meeting our outcomes. Because our outcomes are to help people discover um, new things to read and to read more. So here's another preview of one of our emails. This one had like a play theme, so folks could. Um, we had books around play, trivia, and puzzles. Um, and um, and then I'm going to take us, let's see. Oh, and I'm going to kind of explain how we did um, emails like this. So you could kind of see in the previews that you've seen so far, um, there's a particular structure that kind of carries over from week to week, um, but they also look distinct. So um, the way we did these emails was we built um, and designed a template beforehand that we wanted to be uh, kind of have a crafted look. Um, and it wouldn't look like just a standard book list. Um, and we wanted to kind of feel more like a weekly newsletter that folks were getting, even though it was built around books. We wanted to have like a really warm, personable tone, have a sense of humor. Um, and as far as the books element, element of it goes, we wanted to kind of actually be inspired by the physical displays that you have in your libraries. And we'll kind of take a deeper look at that in just a moment. Um, also, being able to kind of design our template beforehand and then copy over from week to week in Library Aware. Um, that'll let us kind of front load a bunch of the work, get a lot of it designed, ready to go. We can set up issues way beforehand, um, and then kind of plug in um, stuff as we, as we worked on it. And this was really like a team effort. Um, we had folks from member libraries, um, and I'll say them right here. We had uh, Crystal, uh, Marley, Heather, Laura, and Caitlin and myself were all kind of formed the team that worked on this. And we did most of it online, just through Google Docs and Google Sheets in the background, email, um, and then working in Libraryware itself. So now I'm just going to kind of do a walkthrough of one of our issues to kind of show you the elements that kind of make up a newsletter like this and, and how we kind of built it to be as engaging as possible. So we started actually from the top and we did it all the way to the bottom. Every, every issue is themed. So even the headers themselves change from week to week. 
Um, and we'd pick something, you know, a simple graphic, but then throw our branding on top of it. So for this travel, planes, trains, and automobiles issue, um, we use the uh, kind of world famous Portland International Airport carpet. Um, I don't know how many of you out there recognize that, but to folks locally, that was an indicator both that like this is an issue with like it's cultural, culturally relevant, has a sense of humor, um, but it's also kind of like has a local tie-in and it's it's broadcasting what the theme is going to be for that issue. And so here's where uh, this is the primary real estate for the newsletter. Um, and this is the part that is kind of inspired by physical displays in libraries. So we wanted um, this a peek at shelf. Basically, we're doing a peek at a theme. Um, we picked books with um, you know good looking covers, um, clear titles that fit the theme, and um, and then it's just three. When wanted it to be really simple. Um, and kind of like when you just turn books face out on, on a display, we want it to be real simple like that, a single shelf, and then people can move on. Is, is, you know, when you do a, a really strong theme, you don't really need to write a description. So the next uh, component of the email was our interactive component. We called it question time, sort of tongue in cheek. Um, and this could be anything um, kind of a way for readers to engage. So sometimes it would be trivia, it might be a poll about reading habits or preferences or their favorite audiobook narrators, or it'd be a way for people to license plates that we would then uh, mock up and share in the next issue. And you would have uh, answers. So answer time in this issue was some answers to some trivia from the past week. And in a moment, I will also look at how we um, tied in our um, uh, question and answer time would actually tie it in with our collect time to time. Our new and wonderful shelf, this is where we broke away from the theme and let staff essentially do kind of like a staff pick section. So staff could submit um, uh, their own selections and then the email team would go through and kind of grab stuff that looked good for that week. And um, staff could write the, the descriptions and this is, what, this is a way for um, participants to kind of recognize that there were like library staff behind this, kind of creating it and coming up with the book recommendations and making connections that way. We did always feature a couple events. Um, and I know we're talking about promoting collections today, but it, it makes sense in something like this to, to highlight events. Um, but we really did kind of mostly focus on our collections and reading. And we just have so many programs, there was no, there's no real good way to kind of promote them all in one place. So here what we would do is if we could find um, some that tied into the theme that week and make sure that people were getting uh, equal representation in our promotions, we did that in our what's happening section. Then one of the most fun parts of the email is the happy of the week. So this was tied into the theme. It's modeled after a lot of um, other email newsletters that aren't in library world, but in which you kind of build something fun or uplifting or um, kind of like a something surprising or silly, um, sort of as like a, a treat to look forward to at the bottom of the email. We tied it in with the theme and it could be videos. Um, it could even go to like downloadable content like coloring sheets or puzzles. But it was another um, way to kind of build engagement into the newsletter and make sure that each newsletter was offering kind of like a plethora of, of content for folks. Finally, since uh, email was our primary way of communication and engagement for the countywide program, we didn't want folks who signed up later in the season to lose out. So we built these, um, uh, our, basically our past issues each into each uh, issue so that people wouldn't lose out, on, uh, miss out on what we had done before. So if they wanted to, they could find other recommendations and content um, earlier in the, uh, from earlier in the season. And it was also a section where we credited the team who worked on it every week. Um, you know, it's kind of in the fine print, but we want folks to know that there's real library staff working on making this content for them. Um, so just taking a closer look at a couple elements, we have um, the question time, wanted to show another one of these sections from the email. Um, the question time was kind of usually was our, our point of highest engagement. Um, and at times we could 
use it to actually promote um, the collection. So what we did here is uh, Heather on our team suggested we use the updated book Twitter hashtag and let people give a stab at it. So they had to uh, come up with updated book titles for classic um, books, um, which usually was just going to be some sort of corny joke. <laughs> and as you'll see in the next issue then, in answer time, uh, Caitlin, who's on our team, made some amazing MS, print, MS Paint uh, renditions of these uh, book covers um, and book titles that people suggested. So it, this kind of did everything all at once. Um, it linked people to the collection and um, got them engaged with the collection, but also it was a way for them to actually engage with us and participate and um, see stuff that they had submitted uh, the week before showing up in the, uh, in the newsletter the next week. So this, some people in our survey mentioned this specifically as one of their favorite things from the program. It's also a great way to promote our digital collections. Um, we had two issues where we made the theme actually tie into our digital collections. So one issue, we stole an idea from OverDrive <laughs> and uh, featured some quick listen audiobooks. And, and then in the next, in a, later in the summer, we had an issue uh, when we launched Canopy, uh, we made the theme of that issue about movies. Um, so we had a page to screen feature that linked to books and to their uh, uh, movie versions in Canopy, uh, which helped us, you know, kind of bump up usage of those resources. So um, to kind of tie up, uh, what do, it matters more what readers get out of this than what we get out of this. We had fun doing it, but it, you know, it is work, um, but it met our outcomes. So 80% um, discovered something new or read more than they usually do, which were our primary two outcomes. Um, and that's telling us that, you know, the work that we're doing is meaningful for them. And we came in third behind <laughs> friends and family and Amazon as uh, the best place to get reading recommendations last summer for those who participated. So uh, we actually felt pretty good about that because typically in these kind of surveys, um, friends and family and places like Amazon are where people are already getting most of their reading recommendations. So if we're coming in third to that, we feel pretty good. And then finally, I just wanted to share, we do a survey at the end of the year, uh, usually have uh, over 500 people um, respond and um, in particular um, folks really like the email they discovered a lot to read um, and so this tells us that you know what we're doing uh, folks really are kind of getting something out of it and it's something that um, not only are they getting recommendations but they're enjoying the experience of getting these in their inbox and engaging with the collection in that way um, that's it for me today, so I'm going to turn it over to uh, Kathy and our next presenter. And if you have uh, any questions, you are welcome to email me. And then um, this slide just has a few links to these uh, issues that were featured here if you kind of want to uh, view them in the browser and, and, and look at them more closely. Thanks. Thank you, PJ. Um, and everyone, these resources will be available after the webinar. We're going to collect all of those to make that easy for you. I just have to really congratulate PJ. Those are great-looking newsletters with really engaging and fun content. I love that your header changes with each issue and ties in with a the theme. I think that's great. And who knew airport carpeting could become famous? So if you have questions for PJ or our upcoming presenters, just send your questions in through chat and we'll go through them at the end. So our next presenter is librarian Sarah Leedy. She's head of ILL, Periodicals, and Readers Advisory at Anderson County Library in South Carolina. And that includes the main library, eight branches, and a bookmobile. Sarah curates suggested materials lists for all ages and programs at her library and heads up the annual Books and Community, Community-Wide Read, and its spin-off programs. I can tell you personally, because I've talked to her, and she is passionate about Reader's Advisory as not only a great way to engage readers, but a super effective tool for promoting your collection. I think you're going to love seeing some of the examples that Sarah shows you. So here's Sarah to tell you all about it. Sarah? Hey, guys. Um, so 
Reader's Advisory. Obviously, we want to promote our collections, but we want to promote all of our collections. People tend to just think of libraries as books, so showing some of the other stuff that we do. But I also try to, when I'm creating my book lists, to do it in a way that's going to kind of change the conversations we have with our patrons, not just about books, but library services in general, but also helping with kind of shifting how we think of librarians and libraries, because um, some of my book lists are a little bit bizarre and cheeky and fun. Um, so uh, with RA, coming up with ideas for lists and stuff like that, um, I kind of start out with what kind of book list might I want, looking at what's popular, you know, what might be trending online, um, those kinds of things, because as far as I'm concerned, anything can be RA. Um, I also create RA lists that are going to tie back to specific events at our library. So you can see this is an example. Um, they just announced the final season. Oh, my gosh. Um, but on here, I'm actually showing how we have the novels digitally and in print. I've got the graphic novels, the DVDs, and the soundtrack. So it's showing all of the different ways that we provide Game of Thrones access at the library. So I'm starting with trending topics. Um, some of you guys may or may not be football watchers. Um, but a couple weeks ago, I was fortunate to be on the desk at work when uh, Clemson, which is about 20 minutes away from where I'm at, was playing Florida State, and the game was abysmal. Uh, they were talking more about this gentleman who was reading during the game. So I used that to make an RA, um, and it was a real quick, real fast, and absolutely hilarious. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit later about some of the reactions that we got to that. But when you're using trending topics, um, I think it's kind of good to be a little bit cheeky with it. You want to match kind of like the gravitas of whatever you're doing. It needs to match um, the list, how you do it, the wording, all of that. So here's some other trending topic ones I did. Um, I did for Valentine's Day last year when Fifty Shades Freed came out. We did a Valentine's Day spectrum. So that was tying to a trending topic. I've got Shark Week, and then I don't pretending that Stanley is here. Um, so those are just some use of trending topics. Another thing I like to do, I mean, holidays are, and seasons are kind of an obvious thing to do, but I like to do it in kind of like fun and kitschy ways because that can make people kind of pause and stop and look at it, and it's going to help people engage. I also like to take funny holidays like National Coffee Day, which I didn't know was a thing. Um, I had a nonfiction one for this one as well. So here's some holidays uh, for Thanksgiving. I just did this, putting the fun in dysfunctional families. Um, we've gotten a lot of laughs out of that one. Um, for the, remember the 5th of November, you know, playing off the rebel with the cause, uh, veteran service. So these are just some examples of how I've kind of taken a different approach to some of our holiday stuff. Here's some other kind of funny ones that I've done. Um, Pirate Day was very fun. Uh, and the South Carolina Ghost Stories, we actually saw a huge circulation increase in that because we actually have a whole collection that's specific to South Carolina, and we have like an entire room that's curated by an archivist. And so we saw some uptake in that circulating and an interest in a much more local aspect. So that was highlighting a part of the collection that we have that most people aren't necessarily aware of, but doing it around Halloween, kind of bringing in, don't forget the South Carolina room for us. So another thing I look at, like I said, not just trending, but what's popular. Um, obviously, when the latest Avengers movie came out, a lot of people had feelings after it. So I created an RA uh, focusing on other sorts of kind of ragtag teams doing heroic shenanigans. Um, I don't want to say things because they're ridiculous. Some other popular things I did, um, immigration's been in the news, so I kind of took a different approach to it because obviously we're libraries and we don't necessarily want to be too political. Um, so the coming to America is all like very specific looking at immigration stories to the U.S. Um, if you know anybody who is younger and in the dating world, they've probably talked about the new number who dis uh, text messages and messages that you might get. Um, so those are unreliable narrators. Um, we just, that actually is going live on our social media, I think, today. So we're going to see how that's going to go. Um, and obviously, Stranger Things, everybody can't get enough of that. Uh, this is an example of how I actually use RA with library event promotions. So anytime we have an author come in, I try to create an RA list so that if people aren't necessarily familiar with the author, 
they might be familiar with like the style of literature or another similar author. So it can draw people to different aspects of the collection while also promoting the event. And I do this for any time we have any of these um, events with authors. I see a question, how are they delivered to the public? I deliver them in all ways. I put them on social media, they go on posters, everything. I'm going to talk a little bit about location uh, in upcoming slides, but I try to make my stuff so it can go anywhere and everywhere uh, our digital services or marketing people want it to go. So here's some other library stuff every year for um, summer reading. I do something that goes with the theme, uh, and I do it for all different ages and different types and styles of literature. Uh, we have our winter reading program coming up, so it's 20 minutes a day, 25 days in the month of December. Um, and so we're focusing on award books since it's award seasons for movies, but most people don't know about award books for books. So it's kind of award season, so we're kind of putting the focus on that. Mary Alice Monroe, need I say more? She's fabulous. Um, so going a little bit with how I, where I put this out on all of that different stuff, um, so looking at locations, I'm kind of fortunate because I get to use this, um, we have this spinning four-sided whiteboard that I use at our main location and I get to also write on it with um, dry erase markers. Thank God I have good handwriting. Um, so I use that and that's right at the entrance of our main library and so I'll put stuff on all four sides of that So it's as soon as people are walking in the door. They're seeing that it might be spinning. They can interact with it. It's by the elevator Some of the other ways that I do that is I try to think where people are gonna be That might be interested in the RA list that I'm creating Because um, you know some of our patrons just walk straight to the doors and straight to the desk and pick up their holds That's that was me before I became a librarian um, so like the Game of Thrones one I have actually in our DVD stacks and I know some of our branches have put it right there in the DVD area reminding people the new season's coming out. And this middle picture is showing a thing that I made to show um, different ideas for a holiday drives with different types of audiobooks. And then I also have these really cool movable displays. Um, that I'm able to kind of shift and move around the library and fit different posters on it. And so like this one's the YA one, so I'll pull titles that I think might be interesting to the teens, and I put those posters on that, and it goes right in the teen area. Um, so this is also, I put my stuff on social media, so you can see our Clemson thing. I'm still laughing about it. Somebody called me Savage on Facebook. Um, so that was something, it was a trending topic that I put onto social media as well as hanging it up in the library. We had a little bit of a reaction physically in the library, but online social media, I posted it during the football game. And as you can see, we had almost 7,000 people um, that were somehow reached by that with looking at the Facebook insights. Um, so especially when you're using trending topics, that's a really great place to make it go digital and work with your digital services person. I have access to all of our social media since I'm kind of like the backup person for that. Um, so anytime I do a trending topic, I try to make sure I'm pushing it out on social media too because I know that's where we're going to get traction. Um, another thing that I do is I do bookmarks. Um, so we had noticed with our physical book displays that um, a lot of people were like, oh, am I allowed to check out this book? Um, so we created a bookmark that says, you know, please check me out. It says check me out with the little wink emoji because I'm that person. Um, and that goes in all of our displays. So looking a little bit at um, the formation, so looking at the format that I want to use, really I just wanted to say get information because I think I'm Beyonce. Um, so this was an example I did for, we do a pints and pages thing um, where we just meet at a pub or a bar somewhere in town and we'll focus on a specific genre. And so I'll create a list of different titles along that and it'll be a librarian will host it and so I'll work with them to create the list. Um, but the reason I use this format specifically in library where this is a two page one was so that people could also write on the back of it. So any other titles that they found out about within that session they could write down and keep track of. Um, another, that's my dog, that's my baby. Um, so I did a two page or the two bookmark thing for that, um, looking at books we promised the dog lives through. 
because um, one of our libraries wanted to do a display for um, pet adoption month, specifically dog adoption month in October. So I thought I'm going to do one that the books are where the dogs live. Um, so that's going to give you, that middle one is a close up of like the check me out one. So that's a monthly thing that I do. Um, and I'll do kind of different themes every month or it'll just be books that people on staff have read and have enjoyed the previous month. This one's just the um, banned books one. I tend to try and lean toward posters just because people tend to recognize books or materials more by the visual aspect, like the poster. You're going to think of the book cover, not necessarily the author. Um, but with the bookmarks, that doesn't always work. So that's um, the check me out ones I do. But I also create with those posters you guys saw that I do for events with authors and do RA. I also do bookmarks because bookmarks are great because they're right there at the desk when people are checking out from circulation. And so they can grab that bookmark. They're saying like, oh, you have a library program. Oh, I loved Cold Mountain. I bet I'm going to love this Bryn McLean book too. So that's kind of another way I tie the RA and events together. Um, oh, I forgot. I edited my, down my slides because I was too much. Um, so that's my contact information. I see some questions. Uh, I've got eight branches, and I do actually push them all out to um, all of the branches. Um, what I essentially do with that is I'll create the digital copies, and then I email all of the branch managers, and they all have the capacity to print on like an eight by eleven or an eight and a half by eleven. And if they want the poster form, they just let me know and I shoot it out to them. And then if they have requests for specific things because they're doing some kind of display, they also just ask me and say, hey, I'm looking for a list like this, and I'll go ahead and create a list for them. Um, and I do use LibraryWare. Um, all of this stuff I did in LibraryWare. Um, I'm pretty sure all of us that are going to talk are pretty much using LibraryWare. Um, yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm done. I try to be quiet. And, Concise time. Oh, that's perfect. Thank you, Sarah. In fact, as you can tell, Sarah has a lot more to share. Um, she has a lot of great examples that we got a sneak peek of and thought that looked so fantastic that we have invited her to do a guest blog post. Um, so watch the novelist blog. You're going to see a couple of posts coming up that I think you're really going to like tied into this webinar. So subscribe to that or bookmark that. Keep an eye on that to see some updates. Her book lists are fantastic, great topics, great book tie-ins. Um, I think you're really going to enjoy that. Um, again, you can go ahead and find that link in chat. And remember to use chat for questions that we're going to go through at the end. So if you had some more questions for Sarah, we're definitely going to get to those at the end. Right now we want to turn to the dynamic duo of Sarah Hart Coatsworth and Heidi Wyma at Chatham-Kent Library in Chatham-Kent, Ontario. Sarah is manager of marketing, outreach, and programs, including event promotion, media relations, and social media. Sarah is also responsible for exploring ways to provide outreach to the community, including people who don't use the library yet. I bet she takes care of that problem. Heidi is Manager of Support Services and is responsible for much of the behind-the-scenes work across the CKPL system, including technical services and collection development, IT support, and courier services. I believe we're starting with Heidi first, so Heidi, take it away. And we are learning more all the time from what other libraries are doing, so we are happy to share our ideas with other people. We're talking today about a specific uh, marketing campaign that, that we did, but to put this campaign in context, we thought we'd tell you a little bit first about Chatham-Kent Public Library. So we have 11 branches in our system and we serve a population of just over 100,000 people. We have a mix of rural and urban libraries. Our smallest community that has a library branch has probably less than 500 people, and our largest community with our central branch has uh, 43,500 people. So we have a range of a mix of, uh, of populations that we look after. We are open 305 hours a week across the system, uh, depending on the size of the branch. We see a about 359,000 in-person visits each year, and we have almost 30,000 active borrowers. 
our circulation is just over 800,000 annually, and an increasing amount of that is uh, digital downloads as our virtual user base, like a lot of libraries, is growing. So this graphic, by the way, that we just threw up on the screen came from our annual report, and that was also made in Library Aware. So at the beginning of the year, uh, Chatham Kent Public Library was awarded a grant from Library Aware to engage our readers. Prior to this grant, as has been mentioned already in this webinar, we've been using Library Aware primarily to promote library programs. Our new goal was to boost awareness about collections and as well as just the public library in general by using Library Aware. So over four months, we engaged patrons and energized our staff in reading, watching, learning, and playing with CKPL's collections. Uh, through a series of visually appealing uh, fun marketing promotions, both using traditional and non-traditional uh, marketing channels. Our library staff challenged our library patrons and our non-users, uh, thanks to Sarah, uh, to rediscover the library. <laughs> we have around 70 staff, of which almost 50 have been trained to use Library Aware. We don't have any dedicated marketing uh, staff at Chatham Kent Public Library, so almost everyone contributes to our marketing efforts. So we do encourage our staff to use Library Aware because it means that our promotions have a consistent uh, look and feel and a professional look and feel, as well as proper branding. So for fonts, our colors, our logos are appropriate, things like that um, makes it very easy with, with Library Aware. So for our initial campaign, uh, we promoted a different collection every week in multiple formats. After the four months, we continued to, do, to use Library Aware to promote collections and library programs, but just not as a schedule that was as intensive as our initial campaign. Um, we shared our promotions on multiple platforms, including print, so posters, bookmarks, shop talkers, and digital, social media, television monitors, and express checkouts. Our goal was to catch folks where they are. So we're trying to capture their attention uh, while they're checking out their materials, uh, while they browse the shelves and our, and our library displays, or while they visit us online or on social media. So with the goal being to market our collections, we wanted to tell everyone that the library has what they want or what they need. So the tagline, we've got a book for that, we thought captured this idea perfectly. So Library Aware offered a new year, new you template that was perfect for the launch of our campaign, which was happening right at the beginning of January, and that's what we started with. Uh, so this on the screen is, is one of the first promotions we did that featured book covers. We love how easy it is to make a colorful poster, it pops, and, and all we're doing is really just taking advantage of the variety and design of cover art that's already out there available to us, so it, it made it easy for us to do that. Um, and the drag and drop templates that, that came out recently for Library make it super easy to swap out the covers, so even if you're taking a template that exists um, but you don't have those books in your collection, you can easily swap them out for other, for other books that you do want to highlight, other books according to a theme, that kind of thing. So, the resulting promotions are colorful, they're eye-catching, they're engaging. So today we wanted to show you some examples of the promotions that we created uh, for the various platforms when we did our campaign. So these two are digital posters, um, or widgets as they call them, that were created for our branch TV monitors. In these cases we paired a large colorful graphic to grab the viewer's attention, draw them in. In this case, these were about crafting, so these are crafting tools and supplies and we paired it with the cover of a book that matches the graphic in color and subject matter, and we chose recent releases of books we thought would be of interest to a fairly broad group of readers on that theme, and, you know, with the thought that if there's one cool book on this subject, it will only lead to more cool books on the subject. <laughs> so the stock images that are available in Libraryware um, really helped us out. Um, much easier than searching for copyright-free images on the Internet. Um, these are, you know, very high quality and professional, and a lot of times relevant to libraries, which really was a, was a key um, for us to, to make it easy for us to do these really quickly. And here is a shot of one of the TV monitors in action at the checkout desk at our Chatham branch. And I'm going to pass it over now to Sarah to talk about some of the other samples from our campaign. Hi everyone. We have a bunch more examples to share with you, so I'll just jump in. CKPL also created marketing for Express Checkouts. As you can see, graphics scroll on the right side of our Express Checkout screens. Hopefully this tempts patrons to check out something new and at least to remind them about other collections that are available. So as you can see, we paired that with a poster display at the Express Checkout, at the Express Checkout and hopefully that's doubly effective. 
Templates allow CKPL to ensure system-wide consistency, as Heidi said earlier. This poster promoting our arts and crafts collections called Get Your Arts and Crafts On was displayed in each location. Uh, there's a picture there of our Dresden branch, which coordinated the poster with a very artful display of themed titles, which looks great. Promotions were also pushed through social media. So the poster was featured on our Facebook page, where patrons can click right on the book covers, which link them to the catalog, and then they can place holds. And on Twitter, where we tagged um, our local art galleries for this kind of crafting collection promotion. Some of our promotions were also pushed to our Instagram and Pinterest boards as well. CKPL didn't just feature craft collections and not just adult materials. CKPL had a team of selectors who created promotions for their own collection areas. So this uh, promotion features children's nonfiction with an eye-catching and cute graphic and a related book suggestion. The portrait design was used on all our express checkouts, as we've mentioned previously, and the landscape uh, design was created for our TV monitors in each location. These really are a timeless uh, uh, promotion. They can be used or reused each year to promote children's nonfiction or alongside an, alongside an event like a cooking workshop or even be shared with a partner like Public Health to, uh, to continue the promotion. We also rolled out some shelf talkers. So as CKPL had already purchased the hardware for shelf talkers, we had to find a template in libraryware that fit. This one is a quarter flyer template used in landscape, and this allowed us to design shelf talkers in a size that worked for the hardware we had already purchased. These shelf talkers were used in a cross promotion, which I think is really great. Shelf talkers featuring a crafting title, like the one you see there, Cozy Up to a New Project, is a, a, a shows a book about crocheting, and they were placed near our Cozy Craft Mysteries. The Unravel This Mystery shelf talker in the top corner uh, features a Cozy Craft themed mystery, and those were placed in the adult nonfiction section for crafts and hobbies. Here are some samples um, for the We've Got a Book for That campaign that use specific events, like National Poetry Month for the poster there, and beside it is the TV monitor image that we use to celebrate Women's History Month. These ones are a spin on the We've Got a Book for That campaign as well. CKPL has a regular schedule to promote features of the month, and last November, our feature, our, we plan to promote writing resources to coincide with our own local author festival, NaNoWriMo, which is a national novel writing month, and a writer's workshop that we were hosting. So these promotions went well alongside displays and event flyers and tying everything in really nicely. And that wasn't November, it was February, I think, but anyway. <laughs> it's hot, next one. As Heidi and I were gathering samples for this presentation, we identified some other great promotions that CKPL staffers created that could easily continue the We've Got a Book for that campaign. So this one is one of my favorites. It's uh, Parenting is Hard, Let Us Help, and it was really effective. The picture is great. I think it catches everyone's attention and, and elicits a response almost. Look at that little one's face. It's the cutest thing ever. Anyway, um, CKPL wants parents to know that we've got their back, so this was a way for us to do that. This poster, the shelf talkers, and our posts on social media could all have included that tagline from the campaign, we've got a book for that, and would fit in perfectly. Here's another eye-catching promotion that would be that could be easily folded into that same campaign. We created and posted this one around Family Day, I think, uh, and it worked great for March break as well. Kids are off school, they might be getting a little bored, and the library has lots of options for entertaining and engaging kids and families. Library Aware, library Aware also has bookmark templates. What a great way to promote collections by flipping this into a book at checkout or um, slipping it into items on the hold shelf or simply having them available at service points because everyone loves a bookmark. The bookmark here features books about financial literacy and that's to recognize Education Savings Week, week and also Financial Literacy Month. It looks great featuring a variety of book cover graphics rather than a print list of titles. As, as Sarah was saying previously, that 
the book covers really grab the eye um, and hopefully will engage more people. The poster promoting resources on careers and career development that's beside it, I think, looks really cool. Um, and each of these items, again, would work really well with the tagline, we've got a book for that. This dramatic looking Oscars poster promotes our new release collection. Many patrons still don't know that we carry the newest DVDs, so this reminds them of that and uh, invites them to sign up for our movie newsletter that CKPL creates and emails to patrons through Library Aware. Uh, the selector also created a cross-promotion for non-fiction titles about the film industry, and of course it looks like it's set in a theater, which we love. Okay. As we all know, public libraries are about more than books, so the previous promotional pieces uh, for DVDs could be used to expand this campaign further to become a promotion for different formats or even different services as well. So we could expand the taglines to include, we've got a program for that, we've got a movie for that, we've got tech for that, we've really got something for everyone. So in closing, CKPL was able to leverage the same promotional designs across multiple platforms, marketing the same collection each week in different ways, whether that was posters, shelf talkers, TV monitors, express checkouts, and through social media, and finding people and catching their eye where, wherever they are. Patron surveys uh, taken following some of our adult programs at CKPL indicate that the primary ways they learned about programs were from social media and posters in the library. So we know both of these items look much more eye-catching and attractive because of the promotions that we've been able to make. Staff work are able to work smart by not reinventing the wheel with each promotion, so they can use the same design on several different platforms, and uh, they can also borrow and edit from other staff for efficiency and to save time. Our statistics tell us that page views at search.ckpl.ca, which is our catalog, were trending uh, upward at the outset of the campaign, and overall our online holds place showed a positive trend over the four months of the campaign. CKPL has seen increased followers and engagement on social media channels, our Facebook page, our Twitter account, and also Instagram. And more patrons and community partners are aware of our programs, our collections, and the services that we offer. And so we plan to continue using LibraryWare to enhance our marketing in this way. Thanks for being here, everybody. I know that there will be time for questions right after I stop talking, I think. Um, but feel free to contact Hi to Your Eyes should you have further questions. Our contact information is here. And thanks so much for listening. Well, wow, thank you both. That was really fantastic. Um, and as she mentioned, um, lots of good information. Um, we do have a couple of blog posts coming up. So we're going to have a blog post about those express checkout promotions that Sarah mentioned. Um, we're also going to have a dedicated issue of Novelist News that's going to focus on the topic of collection promotion. So be sure to check out the link that uh, you're going to see in chat, I think it's up right now, to sign up for Novelist News. That way you'll get that collection promotion issue plus a lot of other really great issues. And you'll also get updates about the blog posts as well. So as promised, we are going to go through a couple of the questions um, that you all have sent in. We've got a lot of great questions. Um, the first one is for PJ. So if you want to unmute your mic, I'm going to throw this one your direction, PJ. Okay. How many people are on the summer reading distribution list? Yeah, sorry, I didn't mention that. We have about 2,400 people subscribed, um, and they subscribed by then when they sign up for summer reading online, um, they can put in their email and then opt in for the, the emails that we send. So then we just um, take that, uh, download that information every week, upload it into LibraryWare, and create our subscriber list. Okay, great, great. One of the people was asking really for any of the participants, um, PJ, since you're still on the line, um, I think you talked about this a little bit, but how are you delivering your items to the public? So are they printed, social media, email? Um, how are you distributing those? Yeah, so we, um, this, what I showed today was pretty much exclusively email. 
um, that we create in Library Aware, um, and then um, we will promote the the pro summer reading program and signing up for the email through social media. But those are just standalone posts that we create. Um, but all of the content we made um, and delivered was through Library Aware. We do a little bit of our graphic design and stuff on some of the the images also in Canva and then just upload them. Oh, okay, great, great. Um, and I think Sarah talked about that as well. Um, and then I know um, we probably covered that with Heidi and the other Sarah a little bit. Um, some people were talking too about how they're gathering those initial emails for a newsletter. Um, I know some libraries are allowed to get that information from their ILS if they've asked for that at checkout and people have given their permission for that. Um, any thoughts on that? Yeah, we. it's part of the web form that we create is an opt-in um, checkbox basically, or it's, I guess it's technically an opt-out. So basically they check a box if they say, I don't want to get, you know, weekly emails for summer reading. Um, our staff, we're looking into it, um, uh, are kind of figuring out um, if we want to make it something where as part of signing up for summer reading, you get the email and then you can unsubscribe if you want. But um, that's that's some discussions we need to continue to have because that, um, you know, there's just kind of like some philosophical issues to work out there. But, um, sure. but yeah, that's how we collect them for, for this. Otherwise, our other newsletters, we have subscription pages on our website and we promote those from time to time. Okay, great. Um, Sarah, this might be one for you because I know that um, everyone did uh, book lists, but I know you, you did a lot of those, and as the self-described queen of reader's advisory at your library. Um, so someone's asking, um, how do you find titles that fit your criteria, and how many copies do you have of the specific titles that you promote this way? I know there's always a concern that you might run out of titles, so um, tell us a little bit about how you find the titles that fit. All right, am I unmuted? Yes. You are. Okay. Um, so when creating my list, I'm best friends with all kinds of Google things. Um, I look at the catalog. I use Novelist. I use Goodreads, Book Riot um, to kind of get ideas for different um, books. And what I do is I always check the book list against what we do have in the catalog. I don't ever promote a title that we do not own a copy of. Um, depending on the list, um, kind of depends on if we only have one copy of it and it's like a mystery title, I might not put it on the list because it is going to create an issue with trying to get their hands on the book, whereas if it's nonfiction, I'm a little less concerned since nonfiction doesn't circulate as well in my area. Um, beyond that, I mean, I usually try to make sure we have at least two copies of a book. If we have holds on it, we can always, uh, we monitor that kind of thing and we might actually go ahead and order more copies within like our request budget so that we can get more copies to make up for the hold. I also try to make sure that I don't promote books that we don't also offer digitally. Um, so, and that's where I'll, I'll get on. We use Hoopla and Overdrive and I'll check both of those catalogs to see um, what we're offering digitally as well with the stuff that I do. Okay. I don't know if and that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Um, Someone's wondering if you recycle your list year after year and just update them, or do you use um, a master calendar? Uh, loaded How do you questions. stay organized? <laughs> <laughs> um, so my position's brand new. Um, I've been in this position overseeing all of the reader's advisory stuff maybe two weeks, kind of brand new. Um, prior to this, I was just kind of whichever area I was working in, I was creating book lists, so I had been the adult programmer. I have done some recycling of lists, but I do try and update it because there is always new things that are coming out. Um, so like last year for our books and community, we did a Black History Month focus. So this year I've already started kind of revamping and adding new lists to that because especially YA, looking at the African American experience in America, there's I can think of five books off the top of my head that are brand new that I can put on that list. Um, yeah, kind of it depends on the list. Some of them I 100% will update and redo. Sometimes I don't. 
Um, some of it too is I'll at least make some changes to where it looks different because if somebody's like, oh, I've already seen that, they might not read it. Um, you want the consistency in looks so people will recognize that something is a part of a specific campaign. So I'll use the same design and layout for every year for books and community, but I will switch out titles and switch out enough elements that people will recognize it ties to it, but it's also different and it's new. Okay. No, it sounds great. Um, you know, we're getting a lot of comments about just loving the We've Got a Book for That um, promotion. So uh, yes, round of applause for, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of stealing. It's not stealing, sharing um, going on. So um, we'll take a few more questions, but stay tuned because I'm going to show you all a template that was inspired by that so that you can kick off your own campaign to do that if you'd like. Um, so let me see, um, someone else was asking, and anyone, any of our presenters might want to um, uh, jump in on this one. Um, someone was asking how much time you spend putting these things together, working on these, um, how much time you spend on collection promotion weekly or monthly. Um, it sure looks like a lot of work, um, and I know you all have day jobs, so... Um, Heidi, do you want to uh, throw something in on that? Okay, Heidi wants me to talk. It's Sarah. <laughs> okay, um, that's fine. Uh, um, well, as we said, there's no one here who's specifically dedicated to marketing. Um, so we all we all take a piece of it. So for this campaign specifically, each collect uh, each selector um, created promotions for their own areas. Um, in so. I mean, and they're doing that as part of their regular job in between all the other things they're doing, reference and um, readers advisory and outreach and programming. Um, so it would be hard to pin an, a, an amount of time on that. We know that, that a lot of them are, are really good now in library wear and, and don't need to necessarily take a whole lot of time to create something that looks really great. And then Heidi and I, um, oversee all those, so we review them and approve them before they uh, are uh, printed or posted on social media. And um, so that's kind of how we how we roll with it now. So because of this campaign, we're looking at a lot more posters um, yeah. for programs and for RA and displays. And uh, we're also reviewing um, all the newsletters that go out uh, every month or every other month. So. It does okay. take it yeah. does take quite a bit of time, but uh, but I think it's worth it. That's great. I do too. I do too. Um, so I hope that everyone has gotten a lot of great ideas. Um, you know, like I said, I'm like um, a lot of you. We spend a lot of time promoting our programs and events, and those are super important. Um, but we've also got great collections. So I hope you've been inspired and gotten some great ideas for how you can go back to your library and promote your collections. Um, in fact, on that note, um, we went ahead and we're going to go ahead, sorry, and transition to our quick training session. So if you have just a few minutes, hang on. Um, you're looking right now at a collage of just some of the new templates that we created that were inspired by Chatham-Kent Library's We've Got a Book for That tagline. Um, if you can't stay with us, thanks for joining us for this webinar. We'll be posting a link to the recording and all the materials and resources from this webinar soon. But if you have just a few minutes, I'm going to go through this um, fairly quickly so that you can um, take a look at what we did here. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right. So now we are in Library Aware. Um, and I have already gone ahead and started a um, promotion, which some people call a folder, just to um, capture all of the items that I will make for We've Got a Book for That materials. Now, um, if I wanted to create an item, I'm just going to go ahead and hit the Create Item button. So 
you're going to see some templates pop in here for our bookmarks. Uh, we have templates for a lot of different formats, as you can see over here. Um, we took a slightly different angle on CKPL's concept, and we combined it with one of the great features of Novelist, which allows you to search for books based on genre, appeal, theme, and a number of other factors. So as you can see, I'm going to Flyer Books, and what we came up with was um, a book list template, or what I developed was a book list template in Library Aware um, that I could use in Library Aware to customize. Now here's our template. I can search by the image or I could go in here to the search window. Um, we're adding new templates all the time. You can see we're already doing some best of 2018 templates here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that template and have that load into the editing space. Um, our templates are created by graphic designers. I am not a graphic designer, so I'm glad we have graphic designers um, that make whatever I work on look good. Um, these are all library focused, as you can see from this template, so you're not having to take a party invitation and turn it into a book list. Um, the other thing, too, as a user of LibraryWare a couple of years ago, I loved the fact that our branding strip dropped right in automatically, so you can see that that popped in. So let me show you how easy it is to take this great-looking template and go ahead and update that um, and customize it. So all I have to do is go ahead and um, click on the book jacket image. And if I go right up here, I can swap that image. And this is going to open up the Library Aware Image Selector. You heard Heidi and Sarah talk about that. We have millions of images that are available for our customers to use. We take care of the copyright concern for you, so you and others at your library don't ever have to worry about that. We also have, as I said, our fabulous designers who create um, imagery for you to use. So a lot of this is um, handmade, if you will, um, and ready for you to use. So we've got images, promotional items, book jackets, and AV cover art. So I'm just going to go to book jackets. And that's going to open up. And I can search for keyword, author, title, or ISBN. So for the first book, I'm just going to go in and put in my author name. And it's going to bring up her book, The One. And all I have to do is hover over it. If that's the one I want, I can select that jacket, and it drops it right in. Now what's great is it's going to drop it in at the exact size and aspect ratio of the image that I'm replacing. So all I have to do is accept, and it's not going to mess up the rest of my formatting. You know how it is sometimes when you put in a larger item and it bumps everything out of place. Well, I don't want to deal with that. So that's one of the things that I really like about it. So I can also, um, let's do a search by title. And another book that I found by using Novelist is Where the Road Takes Me. And I have to tell you, while I'm pasting this in or dropping it in, um, I am not a librarian. Um, I'm a marketing person. And I had one of our novelist librarians um, show me really quickly how to use novelist to make my book list. And because we've got these themes now, it was super easy to just look for books that fell under contemporary romance, that were moving, and high drama. Um, got the list really quickly and selected the four books that I thought would work the best on this flyer. Um, so I don't have to be um, a librarian, as I said. Um, I don't have to know a bunch of books off the top of my head. So I can just drop in this title, and here's Beach Lane. And again, I can just accept that. I could edit that if I wanted. I could edit this whole thing. I mean, this is all customizable. I could edit any of this text. I could change the color. If I don't like that imagery, I can change out that image. I can turn it into something completely different. I can even have a book list of ISBNs. So I could put an ISBN in there, and here was the book that came up 
for that. All right, so now that I've accepted that, if I like it the way that it is, I can do that. I can change out any of these text boxes, any text that I want. I can switch out the graphics. So that's really easy to do. Um, someone was asking about formats. So let me change this really quickly, and I'll show you that. Um, I'm just going to call it Romance Flyer. Um, I could very easily um, pull up formats for half-page flyers, full page, which I was just doing, which is 8.5 by 11. We've got them in um, landscape. We have poster size, which is um, 11 by 17. And then what we used to do at Jacksonville Public Library is print those out on our poster maker, and they looked fabulous. So you can print them out and put them on a 22 by 36 or 24 by 36 poster board, and they look great. Um, so you saw that if I just click on the title, I can go right over here to this menu and I can print it. I can get an image URL, so if I want to hyperlink to it, I can do that. I can also turn that into a PNG. I can get a PDF URL or I can make it into a PDF. I can also post it to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, or our catalog if we've got Novelist Select. So um, let me just show you if I wanted to post it to Facebook, how that works. Um, now, of course, you have to have the rights and the permission, so to speak, um, the access level in Library Aware from your account administrator to post to Facebook. So don't worry about that. You're not going to have just anyone at your library posting to Facebook. But I could put any lead-in comment that I wanted to here. Um, you know, check out these great romance novels or whatever I wanted to. I could have it linked to the item as it's linking. I could have it linked to a book, to a search in the catalog, anywhere I want. What I love, too, is that I can post it right now or I can schedule it for later. So this I just love. And I've got a customer that Starts out at the beginning of the year. She looks at the calendar. We have a lot of materials that are already made up, already ready to go for promoting um, certain holidays when your library is closed or different events that are coming up. So if your library is always closed on Christmas Day, then you're going to want to go ahead and schedule something for December to let people know that. So she already has hers all scheduled out. So you can do that as well. And I'm just going to flip over to the Library Aware Facebook page so you can get an idea of what that looks like when you post a list. Um, so it turns out really great. Um, these also look great on Twitter. Um, you can post right away to Pinterest. And as I said, you can also place these in your catalog for when someone is doing a search. Um, I do want to show you on Pinterest. All of these templates, um, so if you're interested in taking a closer look at these templates, you can go to pinterest.com slash libraryaware. And you're going to see a board for novelist promotional templates. So those are the first ones on here. As I said, we have half page versions, full page. We have bookmarks. These will print front to back for you, and you just slice them into two, three, or four, depending on what size you want to do. We also have a lot of other boards that you might want to check out. So if you go to our Pinterest page and click on our boards, then you're going to see our new templates. Um, for our friends in Australia and New Zealand, a lot of templates um, specific for their market. Lots of great Canadian templates, um, Canadian artwork, and of course, everyone who's interested in promoting books, events, programs, all the great things your library does you're going to want to go ahead and check out the Pinterest board. So um, you can also, of course, as someone was just asking, you can, of course, just print that out, post that in your library. Um, you can post that down the street at the coffee shop. We've had some people do that as well. So we have lots of materials to help you promote your collections as well as your events. I really hope that you enjoyed our webinar and this quick training session. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Watch for the blog post, 
sign up for Novelist News so that you can be on top of everything and see when all these new items are coming out. And appreciate your time. Thanks so much.